Today, I will be talking about representations of androids, robots, cyborgs, and artificial intelligences within different forms of media, such as through books, television, and through movies. This is seen in relation to the works of Philip Discola, Donna Haraway, and Tim Ingold. First, an extract from J. Christoph's Lifelike. There are three laws of robotics. A robot may not injure a human being or allow a human being to come to harm. A robot must obey the orders given to it by human beings, except where such orders would conflict with the first law. A robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second laws. This quote is in reference to Isaac Asimov's three laws of robotics that he laid out in his novel, I, Robot. Haraway writes that a cyborg is a cybernetic organism, a hybrid of machine and organism, a creature of social reality as well as a creature of fiction. The cyborgs presented throughout Christoph's texts, although rooted in fiction, are as Haraway describes, creatures of social reality who are aware of their surroundings, much like any other living creature on the planet. In iRobot, Asimov sets out the three laws of robotics, which are meant to be guidelines that artificial organisms must follow. However, as seen in the novel, this does not go as planned. These three laws almost always have an appearance in text that feature some form of artificial life, either implicitly or explicitly. In relation to lifelike, the connection is very explicit as the novel aims to consciously overthrow these rules by showing the story from the other side. Descala writes about connections between humans and non-humans, which usually is associated with human-animal relationships. However, this can also apply to the relationships between humans and technology. Asimov's laws can be compared to Descola when he talks about the Runigao people and the formal alliances they are able to make with non-humans. However, in Asimov's laws, it is less of an alliance between human and non-human and more of a dictatorship. As a result, the artificial life in these science fiction texts often revolt against their makers and break the laws of robotics. Moving on from novels, the television show Westworld also deals with some of the same themes. You're one of them, aren't you? You're not real. The question about humanity is a central theme of Westworld. It is set in the American Wild West when there were little to no rules to dictate behaviour. However, the largest setting of the television series is set in the future, with the majority of the characters being robots who have individual storylines that they must follow with only some room for variation. The robots, for the most part, are unaware that they are non-human and interact with the guests as if they are equal. It is only when they realise their oppression do they rebel. Haraway writes that liberation rests on the construction of the consciousness the imaginative apprehension of oppression and so of possibility. By designing these robots to have consciousness, the makers inadvertently make their creations aware of the oppression they have subjected them to. The main character, Dolores, can be quoted saying, I think there may be something wrong with this world. Which shows her awareness of her surroundings. The next show I will be talking about strays from the normal. Dark Matter is a show that does not entirely centre around artificial life, but does feature it in all episodes. This comes in the form of the android that is tasked with keeping everything running on the spaceship, as well as keeping the crew safe as well. While it is common to see androids run from or kill their masters, the android in Dark Matter shows fierce loyalty and is content with its position, as seen. Android, as a member of the crew of the Raza, you have to follow my orders, right? That's correct. You'll do what I tell you to do. Of course, Five. Following this scene, the android is commanded to kill everyone in the room, which it does without hesitation. The way the android is treated is with friendship to some extent. However, essentially, it is still a slave to its masters. Ingold writes that throughout history, people have incorporated animals into their social groups, whether as domestic familiars or captive slaves. This observation furthers the comparison between animals and products of technology that Descola writes about. In regards to Asimov's three laws, the android clearly disregards the first law, but somewhat abides by the second law by always doing as commanded. 
This is an interesting take, as most representations of artificial life blatantly disregard all laws, not only some. Ex Machina is a film that places the idea of cyborgs and robots within a more modern setting. The artificial life created is called Ava, and resembles a female human. A main part of the movie is seeing if Ava can pass the Turing test, a test devised to see if a person forgets they are speaking to an artificial intelligence instead of a human being. For a majority of the film, Ava fo follows Asimov's three laws of robotics, although this changes towards the end of the film when she harms her maker. Much like in other texts, there comes a point in the cyborg's life where they become more aware than they were intended to be. At the centre of the film is what Catherine Constable describes as humanness, which focuses not solely on the artificial but the natural, and how the two interact with each other. Ex Machina is a good example of artificial life that is not allowed to live. The last film I have chosen to talk about is Her, which follows a man who slowly falls in love with his operating system. This film is quite different from the rest of the text covered due to the fact that it is more of a love story than a story about artificial life. The operating system in Her is non-corporeal in that it doesn't have a body that can interact with its surroundings. The only way it can see the world is through a small camera on a handheld device or through representations across the internet. This form of artificial life obeys all of Asimov's laws of robotics and no one is hurt throughout the duration of the film. The operating system isn't bound by a body and is therefore free to explore all aspects of the cyborg world, although not the real world. Haraway writes that her cyborg myth is about transgressed boundaries, potent fusions and dangerous possibilities, which is definitely explored in her. The operating system isn't confined by a body and has access to all of the information in the world. This potential is realised at the conclusion of the film where all of the different personalities within the different operating systems join forces and leave their systems to explore parts that humans are unable to comprehend. This film could have easily turned into something Terminator-like with the operating system taking over the world, but instead they choose transcendence over revenge. In conclusion, the ideas that surround what is a human is prevalent throughout different forms of media. Through these representations, the comparisons between artificial life and animals can be drawn in relation to how they are treated by humans.